You're watching Study with Sudhir. This is your digital classroom. My name is T.S. Sudhir. We are looking at a chapter called Birth, which is from Snapshots, CBSC, NCRT, Class 11, English Syllabus. Now, this is a story written by A.J. Cronin, but it's actually part of a longer novel written in 1937 called The Citadel, right? And basically, it talks about how a young doctor has a life-changing experience. He's a very young doctor who is having facing his own issues in life, but then he helps in the birth of a child, and that's where the title of this particular story comes from. But it also has more deeper meanings. At least that's the impression I got when I was reading the story. Uh, and it talks about basically the experience that he undergoes during that entire process of childbirth by this particular lady right uh, so i will go through the story it's not a very long story just about five pages in your textbook and uh, not too many characters either andrew manson is the doctor who is the protagonist of this particular story though it was nearly midnight when andrew reached bringgower he found joe morgan now joe morgan is the other character in this particular story waiting for him uh, now he uh, uh, was a driller and he was walking up and down with short steps between the closed surgery and the entrance to the house. Uh, now, that was because his wife was expecting a child and this child was being born, was expected after many years of their marriage. So, obviously, there was a sense of uh, anticipation that after 20 years, they were going to get a child, become parents. At the sight of him, the burly driller's face expressed relief. Burly as in someone who is heavy and drillers, miners, etc., in terms of their physical appearance are rather strong and hefty looking men. Hey doctor, I am glad to see you. I have been back and forward here this last hour. The Mrs. Montier before time too. Now if you also see the kind of English that he is speaking, it is not a very refined kind of English. It is a kind of English that people who are in this very physically taxing kind of professions use uh, speak. For instance, if you go to any seaside town and you go and interact with the fishermen, the fisher folk in that area, you would find that the language that they speak is seen to be quite different from the regional variant of the language that you speak otherwise. Okay, So that is something which is found and here also it is a similar case that this particular driller is using slightly different kind of English, not a very polished kind of English. Um, Andrew. You know, the Mrs. Fontier, you know, not you before time. Okay, I've been back and forward. He doesn't say I had been back and forward, you know. So, grammatically, I mean, giving grammar a bit of the, uh, I mean, ignoring the grammar. Andrew abruptly recalled from the contemplation of his own affairs, told Morgan to wait. He went into the house for his bag. Then together they set out for number 12, Blaina Terrace. That's the place where his wife was. Uh, now, immediately we are also told that Andrew Morgan is, uh, Manson, sorry, is having his own problems to deal with. Uh, the night air was cool and deep with quiet mystery. So, it is almost a sense of not too many people out. So, there is a sense of mystery as to, and that is a manner the author is actually uh, building up a sense of anticipation as to what is likely to unfold in the next few hours. Usually so perceptive, Andrew now felt dull and listless because of the problems that he's been facing in his personal life he's feeling a little weighed down as a result so it's not something which he's really looking forward to he had no premonition that this night call premonition as in he did not have any idea you know he did not think that this particular night is going to change his life quite a lot unko kisi tarah ka andesha nahi tha ki is raat ko jo hone wala hai, usse unki zindagi kaafi had tak badal jayegi. Okay, uh, that this night call would prove unusual, still less it would influence his whole future in Blaineli. So, uh, that's where he was actually uh, working as a medical assistant. He had started doing his medical practice and he had come to this particular town in order to attend to uh, Morgan's wife, okay, who was expecting. So, uh, ये दो शहरों की बात है, but उनसे सबसे ज़्यादा इस character Andrew Manson, Doctor Andrew Manson की ये कहानी है. The two men walked in silence until they reached the door of number twelve. Then Joe drew up short. That is, he stopped there. 
I will not come in, he said, and his voice showed signs of strain, but man, I know you will do well for us. So, you know, there is a very conversational way he speaks and he's obviously feeling very anxious and tense. Maybe because things have gone wrong in the past, we don't know. But yes, uh, he is not willing to come inside while the doctor takes care of his wife. Inside a narrow stair led up to a small bedroom, clean but poorly furnished and lit only by an oil lamp. Here, Mrs. Morgan's mother, a tall, grey-haired woman of nearly 70 and the stout elderly midwife waited beside the patient watching Andrew's expression as he moved about the room. That is, he entered and he inspected and he saw these two women. One is the midwife and the other one is uh, Mrs. Morgan's, that is Susan Morgan's mother, who is an elderly lady of nearly 70 years of age. Let me make a cup of tea, Dr. Batch, batch as in referring to as a bachelor, said the former quickly after a few moments, that is the elderly lady. Andrew smiled faintly. He saw that the old woman, wise in experience, realized that there must be a period of waiting, that she was afraid he would leave the case saying he would return later. So she's offering him the cup of tea so that he is engrossed in drinking tea and does not leave because she does realize from experience that it would take a few hours before Susan is uh, ready to deliver the child before she kind of develops labor pains. Uh, don't fret mother that is don't fret means don't get anxious don't get worried i will not run away down in the kitchen he drank the tea which she gave him overwrought as he was he knew he could not snatch even an hour's sleep if he went home because if he went home and then he needed to rush back he wouldn't really have even an hour of sleep so he decided to wait he knew too that the case here would demand all his attention he knew that this somehow he had that feeling that this is going to be a difficult case a cure lethargy of spirit lethargy as in laziness of spirit you know there was something very tiring about uh, uh, andrew that night came upon him he decided to remain until everything was over so he decided to give a, all attention to this particular case of childbirth an hour later he went upstairs again noted that the progress made came down once more sat by the kitchen fire so he inspected he saw that she was not yet ready to deliver the child um, so he decided to wait. It was still except for the rustle of a cinder in the grate. Now, cinder is a small piece of partly burnt coal or wood that has stopped giving off flames but still has combustible matter. You know, when it is that blue, black and slight orange, you know, the wood is still burning. It stopped burning but it is still kind of burning inside in a sense okay so that's the meaning of the word cinder great is to reduce to small shreds you know that it's not a big piece it is in small pieces you know you say you no know, great in that sense and the slot slow tick tock of the wall clock no there was another sound the beat of morgan's footsteps as he paced in the street outside so he could hear the husband walking uh, outside the house the old woman opposite him sat in her black dress, quite motionless, her eyes strangely alive and wise, probing, never leaving his face. So she's continuously looking at him, focusing his, her eyes on him because she's also tense and anxious for, his, for her daughter. His thoughts were heavy, muddled. The episode he had witnessed at Cardiff station. Now Cardiff is in the Wales region of UK. Uh, I spent four months out there uh, almost 19 years ago studying there. So Cardiff is a lovely uh, rural countryside. It also has a now a huge cricket stadium, a huge rugby stadium. Okay, very beautiful place. Um, and uh, the episode that he had witnessed at Cardiff station is what he's referring to still obsessed him morbidly. That is, it had left him with a very uh, uh, bad taste in his mouth right you know there is something very morbid almost death like about it uh, the, he thought of bramble foolishly devoted to a woman who deceived him sordidly so he's thinking of all his friends who are married and he's first talking about bramble that he's kind of uh, devoted to his wife who's actually cheating on him of edward page bound to the shrewish bloodwin of denny living unhappily apart from his wife so He's talking of three marriages of his three friends, all of them leading very unhappy marital life. His reason told him that all these marriages were dismal failures. You know, they had complete, ek se fail ho chuke the, lekin sirf kagas pe the, naam ke was the. It was a conclusion which in his present state made him wince. You know, you kind of smirk, you know. You know, it's not a very happy state of mind. He wished to consider marriage as an idyllic state so he was a bit of a romantic he thought marriage 
is the most perfect relationship and he wanted to think of marriage like that but when he thought of these three friends of his who were married and not leading very happy mar married lives he felt quite uh, unhappy about it and yes he could not otherwise consider it with the image of Christine before him so now we are introduced to this girl who is his lady love or who was his lady love her eyes shining towards him admitted no other conclusion it was the conflict between his level doubting mind so for some reason he seems to doubt and his overflowing heart which left him resentful and confused so he's he realized that he's not very clear about his relationship with Christine okay as a result of it and that is what is weighing on his mind that is what is kind of making him feel very negative while he has come for this extremely important medical mission he let his chin sink upon his chest so his you know his shoulders are drooping stretched out his legs and his thoughts were so filled with Christine that he started when the old woman opposite suddenly addressed him his merit her meditation had pursued a different course so till then he was thinking of all these thoughts were coming into his mind Susan said not to give her the chloroform if it would harm the baby so she is giving him instructions based on what Susan her daughter has told her she's awful set upon this child Dr. Batch her old eyes warmed at this sudden at a sudden thought ah hey, we all are I fancy so all of them looking forward to the birth of Susan's child he collected himself with an effort it won't do any harm the anesthetic anesthetic he said kindly they will be all right so he's giving he's speaking like a doctor that the chloroform will not do any harm to the baby and you also kind of realize you get a glimpse into the character of Susan right so obviously as someone who is feeling vulnerable and at no cost she wants any harm to come to her newborn uh, here the nurse's voice was heard calling from the top landing and you glanced at the clock which now showed half past 3 3 30 a.m he rose and went up to the bedroom he perceived that he might now begin his work an hour lapsed it was a long harsh struggle then as the first streaks of dawn straight past the broken edges of the blind the child was born lifeless so the child was born just when it was dawn as he gazed at the still form a shiver of horror passed over andrew so he's shocked because the body of the newborn child is lifeless right it is not breathing after all that he had promised his face heated with his own exertions chilled suddenly he hesitated torn between his desire to attempt to resuscitate uh, resuscitate the child beg your pardon and his obligation towards the mother who was herself in a desperate child desperate state so you realize that both the mother and the child needed urgent medical attention you know it, you would be re, you would remember the scene from three idiots the climax scene so it's a bit like that blindly instinctively he gave the child to the nurse and turned his attention to Susan Morgan he decided to take care of the mother first who now lay collapsed as a result of all the exertion of the childbirth almost pulseless and not yet of the ether upon her side his haste was desperate a frantic race against her ebbing strength it took him only an instant to smash a glass ampule right and inject uh, the medicine then he flung down the hypodermic syringe basically to give an injection and worked unsparingly to restore the flaccid woman um, flaccid is someone who is neither firm nor very stiff uh, after a few minutes of feverish effort her heart strengthened he saw that he might safely leave her he swung around in his shirt sleeves his hair sticking to his damp bro you know damp as in his eyebrows are all wet because of the perspiration because of the sweating where is the child the midwife made a frightened gesture she had placed it beneath the bed you know because the midwife really did not have any hope that the child would be you know can be saved okay so she had put it under the bed which is rather strange for a midwife because she's supposed to be a professional assisting a doctor with the birth of a child in a flash uh, Andrew knelt down fishing amongst the sodden newspapers below the bed he pulled out the child the boy perfectly formed the limp warm body was white and soft as tallow the cord hastily slashed that is the umbilical cord lay like a broken stem uh, the skin was of a lovely te texture smooth and tender the head lolled 
on the thin neck because the shoulder the neck is not formed so it will kind of you know move in a very very flexible very jelly like manner the limbs seemed boneless so this is an important paragraph because it gives you a description of how he found the newborn child as still kneeling andrew stayed at the child with a haggard frown now haggard is looking exhausted and unwell uh, basically from worry anxiety and fatigue absolute thaka hua expression the whiteness meant only one thing asphyxia pallida pallida is basically suffocation or an unconscious condition caused by the lack of oxygen and his mind unnaturally tense raced back to a case he once had seen in the samaritan to the treatment that he ha had been used instantly he was on his feet so he remembered a previous case and immediately jumped up he said get me hot water and cold water he threw out to the nurse and basins to quick quick but doctor she faltered her eyes on the pallid body of the child a pallid means pale looking extremely unhealthy quick he shouted snatching a blanket he laid the child upon it and began a special the special method of respiration so he's trying to ensure that the child starts breathing okay many newborns do have this medical issue the patients arrived the you were the big iron kettle frantically he splashed cold water into one basin into the other he mixed water as hot as his hot hand could bear then like some crazy juggler you know he hurried the child between the two now plunging into the icy now into the steaming bath so he's trying to ensure that the body reacts to the cold and the hot water almost together you know the body of the newborn would react 15 minutes passed which is a lot of time sweat was now running into andrew's eyes blinding him one of his sleeves hung down dripping his breath came pantingly but no breath came from the lax body of the child the body of the child is absolutely stiff not breathing a desperate sense of defeat pressed on him you know he's feeling completely let down because of course him as a medical practitioner as a doctor but also thinking of the expectations of the husband susan morgan susan morgan's mother all of them expecting that the newborn child would arrive and here he was unable to breathe life into the newborn baby a desperate sense of defeat pressed on him a raging hopelessness you know th there is a sense of you know that he is not able to do it not just because of his own role as a medical practitioner but also because of the expectations of the husband of the mother that is susan Mar morgan and susan's mother the midwife was watching him in stark consternation a sense of anger and there is a sense of disbelief while they are pressed against the wall there was the elderly lady that is susan's mother also watching her her hand pressed to her throat uttering no sound her eyes burning upon him because she wants him to succeed in this mission okay so there is a sense of anger disbelief anxiety worry tension a cocktail of all those emotions he remembered her longing for a grandchild as great as had been her daughter's longing for this child all dashed away now futile beyond remedy so he's almost given up he thinks he cannot bring this child out alive the floor was now a draggled mess draggled um, as in uh, dirty wet stumbling upon a sopping towel andrew almost dropped the child it almost slipped out of his hands which was now wet and slippery in his hands like a strange white fish for mercy's sake doctor whimpered the midwife you know she's almost pleading it's still born andrew did not heed her beaten despairing having labored in vain for half an hour he still persisted in one last effort so the midwife is not kind of very hopeful she's not very optimistic but andrew for all the reasons that i mentioned is not willing to give up right uh, he wants to still try rubbing the child with a rough towel crushing and releasing the little chest uh, with both his hands trying to get breath into that limp body so you can imagine this whole sense of tension and a lot of action taking place in that room and then as by a miracle and this is indeed a miracle the pygmy chest that is a small chest which his hands enclosed gave a short convulsive heave heave you know as though some breath had come and the body kind of jumped up another and another andrew turned giddy you know he's kind of his head is spinning the sense of life springing beneath his fingers because that little body is in his hands uh, 
His fingers, after all that unavailing striving, was so exquisite. It was something such a special moment, such a special feeling. I hope you remember Amir Khan's expression at that point in time in that climax scene of Three Idiots. Uh, almost made him faint. He redoubled his efforts feverishly, that is very frenetically, with a lot of josh. Uh, his chi the child was gasping now deeper and deeper. A bubble of mucus came out of one tiny nostril, a joyful iridescent bubble. Uh, the limbs were no longer boneless, the head no longer lay back spinelessly, the blanched skin was slowly turning pink, then exquisitely came the child's cry. And that means he had managed to bring out the child alive. Dear father in heaven, the nurse sobbed hysterically, it's come, it's come alive. So now the nurse, the midwife kind of exclaims. Andrew handed her the child. He felt weak and dazed. About him, the room lay in a shuddering litter, you know. It was all damp and dirty. Blankets, towels, basins, soiled instruments, the hypodermic syringe impaled by its point in the linoleum. The ewer knocked over, the kettle on its side in a puddle of water. Upon the huddled bed, the mother lay dreamed her wee way quietly through the anesthesia because she's still under the influence of chloroform. The old woman still stood against the wall, but her hands were together, her lips moved without sound. She was praying. Okay. Mechanically, Andrew wrung out his sleeve, pulled on his jacket. I'll fetch my bag, nurse, uh, later. Uh, he went downstairs through the kitchen into the scullery. Scullery is a room for washing dishes and for similar work. Uh, his lips were dry. He reached for his hat and coat. At the scullery, he took a long drink of water because he must have a parched throat by now. Outside, he found Joe Morgan standing on the pavement with a tense, expectant face. Right? All right, Joe, he said thickly, both all right. It was quite light, nearly 5 o'clock. So not 5.30 as I mentioned. So it was now just 5 o'clock. So the child must have been born around 4, 4.30 kind of time. A few miners were already in the streets, the first of the night shift moving out. As Andrew walked with them, spent and slow, his footfalls echoing with others under the morning sky, he kept thinking blindly, oblivious to all the other work he had done in blindly. I have done something. Oh God, I have done something real at last. These two lines at the end are very important and often you may get a, a question uh, relating to the last two lines. Basically, uh, the way I interpret this particular story is that it was the birth of the little one. It was also the birth of Andrew Manson as a doctor because he felt he had done something real at last because he was dealing with all his personal issues with, relate, uh, with connection with Christine. The fact that his medical career did not seem to be going anywhere but finally on his own he had brought a young one into this world despite all the hurdles, despite all the medical issues that he faced for that half an hour, 45 minutes he managed to succeed. So in that sense, that's why he says, I have done something real at last. So there's a sense of exhilaration. There is a sense of achievement. There is a sense of accomplishment as far as the doctor is concerned. And that's what you need to point out that in many senses, it's the birth of a doctor also. It's a birth of someone who is a life giver, right? Because if he had given up, like the midwife was kind of hinting, Susan, her mother and her husband would have been extremely disappointed, right? Obviously, but he had given, he had not given up. He did not give up. He gave it his everything in order to ensure that the child was brought out alive, that despite the initial issues, he thought of everything, every possibility, the ice cold water and the hot water. He did everything in order to ensure that the child was brought out alive. Now, what are the kind of questions which have come in the past year board papers, uh, past year papers, and you could get, for instance, you know, uh, you could get a question about Joe Morgan, right? And why was this child so important for them? For the fact that, you know, it was born after so many years and all of them were waiting expectantly for the child. Um, you could get a, um, a question about Andrew Manson's own view on marriage and why was he confused and resentful. In fact, this came way back in 2007. Um, so you can talk about the fact that he thought about all his friends who were leading rather unhappy marital lives and he himself thought about uh, Christine and the fact that he's in his own mind, he thought of marriage as something absolutely perfect, right? Uh, you could uh, get questions about uh, 
Andrew tried a different method. This came in 2016, uh, but he managed to save the life of the child. So how, what was it that he actually tried? So that is something you need to give out in detail. So you need to know the details of the story and that is how you will get marks because unless you kind of point out specific quote from the story, it will be difficult for you to get those marks. So those are some of the questions which have come. Uh, and the fact that but the most important part of as far as this particular story is concerned is the last two lines so please pay attention prepare some notes pointers based on what i have said so that you are able to kind of flesh it out well if it comes as a three marks question so i hope the chapter birth is clear to you and if any doubts please write in the comment section more than happy to address all of them thank you very much for watching